Hello guys, in this video we're going to have a look at two-way tables. So two-way tables are quite nice in the exam to uh, come up because they're relatively easy to do. The only mistake that you might make in actually filling the table in is just a calculation one. Uh, but obviously in the a calculator exam you'll have a calculator to help you. And if you do make a mistake, if as long as you check your working, you should be able to spot it and hopefully um, correct it before the end of the exam. Well, they do potentially get a little bit tricky is when dealing with probability. I'm going to have a look at that as well as, uh, in my second example. So what are two-way tables? Two-way tables are quite simple. You have two, he uh, two headings. So I've got my first headings along the top and I have my second one down here. So it's called a two-way table because there's columns and then there's rows. So let's have a look at this particular first example and hopefully that'll explain in a little bit more detail how we use two-way tables. So the first one here, a pizza place sells pizzas in three sizes, small, medium, large. So here's my small, medium, large, it's already given me. And we always add the total. Obviously this one's been given to us, but if you haven't, you've got to do your own one, make sure you put the total in. The three best selling pizzas are Hawaiian, Meat Feast and Vegetarian. So here is the next bit, Hawaiian, Meat Feast, Vegetarian. And again, I have a total. And it says a table below shows the sales for one week. So here's my table. Okay. So sometimes they give you a table to fill in. Sometimes they don't and you're expected to make your own one up. Either way, always read the question and go through to see if they give you any extra information within the question to put into your table. In this particular example, it isn't. It's all in here, but definitely do that as a starting point. Okay. So how do I complete the table? Well, first of all, I look at the missing gaps. These are the numbers that I need to try and work out. And the only way you can do that is to have a look at each column and each row and see, in this case, I have three, sorry, I have four uh, in this column and I have three of the numbers. So of course I can use that to help me work out the missing one. And that should always be your first port of call. So I can work out that one but I could also work out the overall total because I've got three of the four here as well. So those are the two numbers I'm going to work out first. Now, if it was a non-calculator, obviously you could uh, um, work these out with uh, using your usual uh, addition methods or subtraction methods. But I'm just going to use a calculator to speed things up. So I have 20 as my total. So I need to do 20, which is the total. Take away 9, this one's nice and easy to start off with. Take away the 7, so whatever's left must be the answer, which in this case is 4. Always check your work. 7 plus 4 is 11. Add the 9 is 20. Excellent, that one works fine. These ones here, now this is the total for Hawaiian, total for meat fees, and the total for vegetarian. So to get the overall total, I need to add these ones up. So 46 plus 20 plus 34 is 100 so that's nice okay so there were the two obvious ones that we could work out now we have to have another look are there any that now have three well the meat feast now has three values with one missing so i can now work out how many of those were large again i've got the total which is 20 and i'm going to take away these here so take away eight take away four which of course leaves me with eight the other way you could do it is to add these up. So 4 add 8 is 12, and then do 12 take away 20 to get the 8. That's absolutely fine. And the other one we can do is I've got that one, that one, and now I've got that one. So I've got 3 in this row, so I can work out the missing one. So the overall total is 100. Take away the 18. Take away the 20, or again, add those two up to get 38, and then take it away from 100. Either way is fine but we can work out that is 62. And now, of course, we've got these two that are missing, so I'm just going to look at the columns, because I know these three, which means I can work out the missing one. The total for medium pizzas is 62, so I'm going to take away 15, I'm going to take away 8, and that's going to leave me with 39. And then 18, take away 10, take away 8, leaves me with nothing, I can do that one nice and quick. Okay, and there you go, you've filled in the two-way uh, table, and that probably worth uh, probably two marks with those sort of bits of information. Make sure you check everything, add up the rows to make sure they uh, get the totals here, 
add up the columns to make sure they get the totals here and of course the overall total always check that because these are easy marks to get but they're also easy marks to lose okay so that was a nice easy example let's have a look at a slightly trickier one so here's a slightly trickier one and why it's tricky is they haven't given you a table you have to draw your own table okay now hopefully I won't offend any other teachers in this with this particular example. So a year group of 186 students were asked what their favorite subject is. 92 of the students are boys, 28 girls like history best, 41 boys like maths best, and 22 out of the 68 students who like English are boys. So we're told lots of information here. And then we've got some questions, some based upon actual uh, numbers, so how many students like maths, and then we have some probability ones. A student is picked at random. What is the probability they are a girl who likes English? And in part C, what is the probability a student who likes history is a boy? So definitely the best way to tackle this is to draw a table. Of course, a two-way table in this case. So what are our headings going to be? Well, we have our subjects, which were... Let's go through this again. A year group of 186 students were asked what their favourite subject is. We're told there's some boys and there's some girls. We've got history is one subject. We've got maths. And we've got English. Okay, so let's draw those headings in. So we have, let's just call it M for maths, E for English, and H for history. And of course, just like on the other one we just looked at, you need to have a total. And the other bit of information we have is boys and girls. So I'm going to have uh, B for boys, G for girls, and again, I'm going to have a total. Okay, and I'm just going to draw a very rough grid lines here. Okay, now let's start filling in what we know. A year group of 186 students, so that's how many there are in total. Okay, so that can go in there. And I recommend, once you've dealt with a bit of information, cross it out so you don't, uh, you know you've done it and you don't get confused, but also you can see what's still left. They were asked what their favourite subject is. 92 of the students are boys, so in total there are 92 boys. Dealt with that. 28 girls like history best. So they've uh, got 28 girls who like history. There we go, and I've dealt with that one. 41 boys like maths best, so boys and maths, 41. There we go, and 22 out of the 68 students who liked English, we're told that 68 students liked English, so I'm gonna put 68 down here. Dealt with that, we're told 22 of them are boys. So I can put 22 boys like English out of the 68 and I've dealt with that. Okay, so I filled in my table with all the information that the question has given me. Now it's just a case of filling it in like we did before. So let's have a look. I can work out the total number of girls because I know the overall total of students is 186 and the total number of boys is 92. So again, all I do is 186 take away 92. That leaves me with 94, so I know there's 94 girls in uh, total. I've also got one, two, three out of the four here, so I can work out how many boys like history. So the total number of boys is 92. So take away the 22, which is for English, take away the 41, which is for maths, and then that leaves you with 29 must have liked history. We can now work out the total for history by doing 29 plus 28. That gives us 57. And we can also work out the girls who like English, because we know that there's 68 in total. So if we take away the how many are boys, which is 22, we can work out that there's 46 girls who like English. And now we can work out how many girls like maths, because we know there's 94 girls in total. Take away 28, because that's how many like history. Take away 46, because that's how many like English. Leaves us with 20 for maths. And then, of course, we can finish it off by doing 41, add to 20, uh, to get 61. Just check it. 61 plus 68 plus 57 is 186. Good. So we've just checked that to make sure that's okay. And obviously, check all of them as well, but that is correct. So that's the first part, is to set up your two-way table. 
and then we can start answering these questions. How many students liked maths? This is how many students, not boys or girls, how many students liked maths? So I go to the total of maths and I see that it's 61. So that's done. A student, so again, a student, there's 186 students in total. So a student is picked at random. What's the probability they are a girl who likes English? So it's probability. We know it's going to be out of 186 because it's a student who's picked at random. And there's 186 of them. And then a girl who likes English. So girl in English is 46. So it's going to be 46 out of 186 because that's the total for how many students there are. This is where it's slightly different. What is the probability a student who likes history? So it's 57 students who like history. So also probably a student who likes history is a boy. Well, there's 29 boys who like history and there's 57 history altogether. So it's 29 out of 57. OK, so it's a little bit of just reading the question and seeing, um, is it a student? Is it everyone involved? In which case it would be 186. Or is it a bit more specific, like in this one here, where it's talking about what's a probability a student who likes history? So it's out of 57 is a boy, well, it's 29 out of 57. So just read the question and make sure you get the right denominator and then obviously the right numerator for your answer. And that's all there is to two-way tables, guys. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.